You have entered into the black hole of real estate, a place for industry news, tips, and strategies. Once you enter into our vortex, even if you could leave, you're probably going to want to stick around. I'm your host, Ron Weissakarski, and you are now entering the black hole of real estate. Well, I am excited to be back, and I got to tell you, it is silly season right now. Zillow is losing billions on the open, and open door is too. But yet they're posting record profits, and so is Redfin. What is going on in this market when everybody's making money? Even Keller Williams po posting record profits. So what is it? Are we having record profits, or aren't we? And that's what we're going to talk about today. So the first thing that I comes off the plate to me immediately is all these iBuyers. Open Door, Zillow, um, they're losing tens of thousands of dollars on each of these homes that they, uh, they, they purchase. And I, I got to wonder, is it a good proposition for them? It seems to be because they continue to say they're posting record earnings and record profits. Um, but they're losing house by house by house. Now, maybe they're losing more per house. And that would maybe freak some people out, especially if you're really watching the bottom line. But, you know, there's another piece of the puzzle over here, at least in the Zillow platform. Because let's keep in mind that every page on our website really is a revolving billboard that they get to charge agents for. So every page that goes up there, foreclosure, non-foreclosure, pre-listing, iBuyer, any of those things. They're building a future business model. And if they're making profits, despite the losses on this, maybe that's just a, a loss leader. I mean, we've seen grocery stores for years. They'll put something on sale. I don't know, milk, bread, eggs, something essential for maybe you know a little bit less than they actually pay for it or just break even on it to get you in the store. And right now, you know, that iBuyer thing is getting people in the store and it's getting them to take a look at their platform. And once they're on there clicking around, they eventually click on an agent who's paying them to be on that page. And there's, you know, usually three, maybe four on there. So maybe that lost leader is the iBuyer program and the properties that they're buying through Zillow offers. Maybe it's not such a bad strategy. And, you know, it's a lot of ways to look at it. Let's say that you, you know, you had a business and you were losing money on a couple of items, but you were killing it in gross profit on the other ones. Maybe it's just a loss leader approach, and maybe Zillow is going to be okay. Um, I know that Redfin is also talking about great profits, but we're going to just stay in the Zillow space just for a second longer right now. As long as consumers love the website, and they go there. I mean, it's been proven that buyers and sellers do enjoy going on Zillow. Let's, let's not dispute that. And let's also... Take a look at the fact that by getting people to their platform, they're clicking around and it ancillary income from those clicks, you know, pay for play from the buyers, agents and listing agents of the world. It's helping them be a profitable company. It shows that it's their first um, profitable quarter in three years. And they beat expectations. They have over $650 million in revenue and their net income was over $40 million. So they made some pretty serious money. And if you wanted to parse through the um, Zillow uh, quarterly report, there's plenty of places online that you can take a look at that right now. Um, the slowdown in the iBuyer area actually fed into those profits. But you know maybe those profits are a lag indicator of the energy by the iBuyer program. So before we say that they made a bunch of money and they're getting out of the iBuyer business because it's bad for business, you know, the results usually show up down the road. And my suspicion is, even though they lost per house, by attracting more people to the website, it played a role in this record quarter for them. So um, let's not say right now that the iBuyer business is bad or that they're going to stop doing that. Let's just say that they had a profitable quarter despite losses in the iBuyer program. I would be really interested to be a fly on a wall and see you know, where those profits came from and what the contributions were because web traffic, uh, you know, clickbait, that does play a role in their income stream. So let's be careful about that. Now, what's a little bit different is uh, Open Door. You know, they um, had some increased salaries, uh, rent, legal, technology pieces to catch up with it because they had a good gross margin back in you know, 2019, let's say. And yet right now they're showing a net loss. And that caused me to wonder, is the open door just a little bit different? It's, it's a slick, it's a great website. And if people want to sell their profit home with certainty within a certain amount of time and pick your closing date, 
absolutely a great platform for them to use. But differently than Zillow, they don't have the agent community behind it in the clickbait of the Zillow world. And so if we're looking at that from just a, once you get to the website, what do you do? Zillow, I believe, at least from what I can tell, has more opportunities to create revenue once you get to the website. And I believe that Open Doors, a little more one directional, that you have to go on there and eventually make that sale. Now, if, the, if Open Door starts selling off his leads, that could be a, another uh, way for them to derive some income off of this. But right now, what I see is that even though both are losing a lot of money per transaction, it seems to harm, just seems, perhaps open door a little bit more, but we don't know that. Um, long story short, the iBuyer program, I don't believe is going anywhere. I think it's here to stay. And I do believe that there are some benefits that are just being realized by keeping the people on the website. So I don't think either is going away. And we don't know what their next move is. We're not in their boardroom yet. So I would, uh, I would be hesitant to say that it, it didn't work out and that it's going to stop. I think you might see a, a newer, refined version of it. Um, you know, Redfin enters the conversation as well. And overall, they had a better than expected year. You know, Redfin and what it is, is not different than what most people think that Zillow was going to. You know, a brokerage attached to their website with agents across the country. I mean, you know, walks like a duck. I mean, it, we all feel like Zillow's heading that direction. Redfin's been doing it for years. And I've always felt it was misunderstood that, you know, Zillow's not doing anything that's not already been done. They may be doing it a little bit differently and possibly a little bit better. But, you know, Redfin's been kicking for quite a long time and nobody seems to bat an eye. That they've got, uh, you know, agents in pretty much every community across the country. You know, why wouldn't Zillow have that? So I would say that as long as they're doing well and keep going on, that, that points in the direction of, you know, Zillow continue take, marching another step towards it. Um, Keller Williams was even talking about having record profits despite mass defections of agents over to, uh, I would say, their strongest competition for their model at the EXP brand. And... Countless agents have crossed over from Keller Williams to EXP. It's, it seems to be a pretty natural progression for a lot of the agents moving over. You know, I'm not here to pick a platform for you. That, that's for somebody else to decide right now. But even with mass defections, they posted a, a big profit number. There are rumors not behind the restructure that they one day will go public to bring on more capitalization and that they just can't simply compete with the amount of revenue coming in for something like a Zillow or even an open door, or any of these brokerages. But that, that all remains to be seen. And I don't think that's going to play out in such a way that we're going to know in advance too, too much before it actually happens, if it happens. Uh, but there's definitely rumblings out there. You know, Keller Williams has its, its, its mortgage and its real estate business, and now some changes in the uh, structure. So, again, some smart people over there. I, I wouldn't bet against them or count them out, that's for sure. Uh, but even they might be just a little bit different as we morph into what the next next phase of real estate is going to be. Now, as far as um, you know, hot markets, I think that the warmer weather states and those with the ability to get out there and work and not be on a lockdown probably stand a better chance of gaining market share. And it's gonna be very uneven across the country. If you are looking at certain areas where the movement is mainly within the state, and that's what it's historically been, that may continue to uh, just do what everybody's always done. I know some of the, the snowier areas of the country slow down in January, February, and March. And if there was a lockdown in those months, it may not have the effect that people are thinking. If it's already quiet and you're locked down, yes, there's less business, but there wasn't that much business happening in a lot of those cold weather states. I mean, you know, an open house and three feet of snow is not the same thing as the middle of summer. Now, if the timing of the lockdown is May, June, July, or August, I think they'll have a greater effect on things. So let's be careful before we paint a lockdown as decimating to the real estate industry. Now, it might play a bigger role in some of the warmer weather states as people are moving from one state to the next. That could have a different effect. I wouldn't begin to understand who's going to abide by it if there was a lockdown, if it fell to the governors. I know in Florida, they've been pushing to keep things open and get business you know, back up and running. That definitely has to play itself out. Uh, I want to end right now that 
we've had so many people join the real estate industry in the last 10 years, probably doubled the number of agents out there, give or take. And I wonder, as a newer agent entering the business right now, is it harder, easier, the same? You know, when I got in 10 years ago, everything was pretty much a short sale. And so when I entered the, this market, it was, at the time, they said, the, you know, the toughest real estate market in history, with close to 70% of all properties being in some form of foreclosure or short sale. So the agents coming in at that time were battle-tested because the only market they knew was an awful market, like the worst one in history, so to speak. So for agents coming in today with health crisis, what it is, we might be feeling, well, geez, it's the toughest time to get in the market, but yet we're coming off record years of sales. I believe the way that business is being conducted is different, and that's shifted and evolved. And if there was no COVID in 2020, the business has moved dramatically since 2010 when we really weren't doing much with the uh, social media sites. And even the internet wasn't easy to get to. And hotspots and your cell phone were nowhere near what they are today. And websites have advanced tremendously. So even though we feel that COVID might be the story, I don't think it is. I think it's a technology. And the ability of a newer agent to get into business far more quickly and have more of an effect on having sales early in their business career. So for an agent getting started right now, people have chirped for years, join a big team or join a big brokerage and the little guy's going to get pushed out. I don't know. If you're able to use video and you're on social media and you can get training, you could be profitable early in your business career and you could do well. Now, with that said, you know, training, fundamentals, joining a team could absolutely be a launching pad into doing it a lot faster and no one has to go it alone, but I think there's plenty of options out there for a newer agent. I'm not here to say that it was harder when I got rolling in this business 10 or so years ago than it is today. There's more tools today, and we're coming up the hottest market in a long, long time with record profits versus 10 years ago when there wasn't a lot of technology, not a lot of social media and nice websites, and, you know, and the worst market, and you know people's homes being cut, their value being cut in half. Uh, the cards are lined up differently right now. I don't expect that agents joining the business right now would have any higher or lower success rate than those of five years ago and 10 years ago. With that said, I do believe that a lot of agents will um, take their licenses and um, not renew them for this year or just go dark for just a little bit until the uncertainty passes. And uh, some of them may be going back in the working uh, nine to five industry, if that's even a thing anymore. I think a fringe age, it's only, if you only sold a couple homes in 2020, that probably is not going to uh, change dramatically in 2021. And some people will be looking to exit. But there's a steady stream of people coming in. And a lot of people that were business experts in other industries are now coming into real estate. So I, I think the future is bright for the aging population. And it's going to come down to your drive, your determination, your heart, and your fundamentals. So I would not be telling somebody to not get into real estate that it's a bad time. It's actually a great time to be in real estate. It's a super strong market and the tools are out there. So let's stay optimistic for the real estate community. I'm actually super, super bullish on new agents coming into the market. And I'm excited to see uh, how it takes the industry and perhaps propels it to a new, uh, new high for standards. Well, that's a peek into my crystal ball for the week and a, a lot of talk about what's going on with Zillow's and the iBuyers. And uh, we'll be watching. This is Ron Wysikarski for the Black Hole of Real Estate.